first thought is, I don't really know what to do with this with regulatory identities that I have access to. Uh, it's not a quadratic that I can reduce down to u's and t's or something squared. So I'm going to introduce this guy. Now, by the way, please look at your piece of paper. If you did not introduce t and then you started talking about t, that's a problem. Go and fix it right now. You have to introduce something if you're going to use it. Now that I have introduced it, I'm just going to go back into my mind or the piece of paper that I read three hours ago to remember what the t results are for sine and cosine. Hopefully if I know this well enough, I can say 2t on 1 plus t squared equals 1 minus t squared 1 plus t squared plus 1. <coughs> Looking good? Question. Okay, I've translated from trig into algebra, so now I just need to multiply. solve this thing. Okay. I'm going to multiply through, as we've seen a few times today already. That will become 2t. This is going to become 1 minus t squared. This becomes 1 plus t squared. Just as a minor note, and we saw this in the example this morning, I'm going to encourage you, when you transition from this line to this line, the one I've just written, I'm going to encourage you to put brackets even where they are redundant. Can someone tell me what common error are those brackets going to help me avoid? It's when there's negatives, right? So for instance, suppose this question was minus cos x, right? I'm going to introduce this, I'm going to multiply through. Now if I write minus 1 minus t squared, I'm clearly in trouble, aren't I? Because I haven't carried that double negative. So you have to watch out for that. In this case, it doesn't make a difference. But I want to get into the right habits when it doesn't matter. So it does, I have no problems. Okay. Who has this exact line, by the way? Yes? Fantastic. Great. Now you can see a lot of this ends up just sort of coming out in the wash. Two t's on the left-hand side, but what do you end up with on the right? That's convenient. So I've got a solution for t. It's just waiting till we're all ready. I have a solution for t, but I introduced t. The original question had nothing to do with it, so therefore it's my obligation to go back to what the question was really about, which is x. So I undo the substitution and this is what I got. Now tan of something equals 1, this is an exact value, an exact value that you know pretty well. What's the angle? It's 45, right? So x on 2 equals 45 degrees. Is that the only solution? No. What's the other one? Now interestingly, I'm actually not going to write for 225. Here's why. Do you remember when I showed you we are doing trigonometric graphs mainly? And I said, or trigonometric equations, which are simple stuff. Is if I said to you something like this, uh, something like this, right? And I said, okay, x, uh, let's just use the standard domain of x between, that should be degrees, between 0 and 360. You remember this, right? But I said, hey, wait, watch out. You're not just solving in terms of x anymore. This is actually a trigonometric function in terms of 2x. So therefore, that has an effect on this. Do you remember? This is actually going to be, when I'm thinking about what 2x is really between, you had to multiply everything by 2. So that really becomes 720. Okay. So rather than just saying 30, 150, I'm done, in this domain I have more solutions. 30, 150, what comes next? 390, because 360 degrees later, and 510, I think. Okay, so look, those 390, 510, they're in this domain, so they've got to be included, right? Now take that idea, bring it over here. There's no 2x or 2 theta or anything like that. What has been changed there? Right there, okay? So if x is between 0 and 360, then x on 2 is between what and what? 0 and 180. Now, when you think of what the next solution is going to be, it's going to be 225. Is that in the domain? Answer, no. So you can write, if you want, or 225 and then exclude it. But if I've written up here and recognized, you know what, this is a very close domain, this is the only solution that you find. Okay. I don't want x on 2. I want 
x. So I will multiply through. And I have a solution. <laughs> now I suggested to you before, whenever you solve an equation, you can always check. Let's see what happens. Is 90 degrees really a solution? Sine of 90 degrees. Cos of 90 degrees. Does it check out? It does. Looks good. There's just one teeny little problem. Now I pose this question to you, and I know some of you have been working away, so maybe you were quite focused and you didn't hear it. My question to you was, if you didn't have T results, if you didn't know how to do all this, what could you do to approach this question? Now you actually all have all the knowledge you need to answer that question without T results. I just haven't given you really any clues to hint you in that direction. Hmm. Sin x. Do you know what sine x looks like? Do you have a picture in your head of what sine x looks like? Starts from the origin, and then what does it do? It goes up, and it goes down, like that. So you know what sine x looks like. Do you know what cos x looks like? It starts from 1. Then it comes down, it dips, and then it comes back up. Now, you don't have cos x, do you? You have cos x plus 1. So you take that shape, right, and you're going to move it upwards. Okay, help me out. What does this look like? Let's draw it. You told me, and you, you should have this drawing too. You told me sine starts at the origin, and it does its wavy thing, and there's your graph. Yes? Now cos x, you know what that looks like if you superimpose it, but I actually want cos x plus 1. That means its, do, it's range is no longer negative 1 to 1. It's going to be... 0 to 2. Right. Yes? <coughs> What's it going to look like? Cos x starts up here, or cos x plus 1, rather. And then it's going to dip down. How far is it going to dip? What's the bottom spot it's going to get to? Zero. It usually gets to negative 1, but I've moved it up. So it's going to go there, is it not? And then it's going to come back up. Something like that. What do you think? So if this is sine x, and this is cos x plus 1, what does it mean to solve this? Like visually, what does that mean? It means where do they intersect? Now you told me one of the solutions. Here it is. Where is it? It's, uh, it's this guy here, right? I'm a little off, but you get the idea. Right, that's where the uh, turning point is for sine. x equals 90 is a solution, and we tested it out. But we're missing a solution. Why are we missing a solution? What is the solution? By the way? At 180 degrees, they clearly <coughs> intersect. That's kind of why I chose this particular graph, because you can see it. It's not like some weirdo value like the one we did this morning. 